once you understand what makes a cell healthy and what causes damage to a cell, then like weight loss is just a side effect of like taking care of your body and, you know, removing obstructions to the flow of energy, whether it's with the mind or physical. Welcome to another episode of Superior Mind Body Health Podcast. I am your host, Monica Bana, an advanced practice nurse and a health coach. Today, I have Carrie Tidwell on. This is her third time on the podcast. If you haven't watched the other two episodes with her, I highly recommend you go back and watch them. Today, we are going to discuss a deep cleanse that we both did. Uh, it goes even beyond actually fasting. Uh, we're going to discuss what benefits we got from it, how we felt, and why should you do a deep cleanse? As many people think, obviously, your body is supposed to do what it's supposed to do, detox and cleanse itself. But is that really true? We'll find out more in this episode, so stay tuned. And everything that we discuss in here is our personal experience. None of this is medical advice. So if you have any questions or before you make any changes to your health, always consult your PCP. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button so you can get notifications when the next insightful content on fasting, well-being, and mindset comes out. I am doing my videos every week now instead of every two weeks. So I hope you guys enjoy them. If there's any topics or any guests you would want me to discuss or have on my podcast, let me know. Message me on Instagram at monikabanak.official. Well, welcome, Carrie Tidwell, a third time guest on my podcast. Yeah, thank you. Thanks for having me. Thank you. So happy for you to be here. So, Carrie, um, Today, we're going to discuss a cleanse that we both did. Can you, I mean, it was kind of like your idea that you you brought to me because I've actually, I thought, because I'm, I'm a fasting coach and I've done fasting for so long and we've discussed about it. You've done that as well. And then you mentioned that, you know, sometimes fasting is not enough. Like you can fast, but sometimes all the toxins, all that waste just sits in your body and it doesn't get released. So sometimes you might actually be doing the opposite of cleansing versus like when you're doing fasting and you're not really allowing the channels to be open and eliminate the toxins. Can you speak on that? Why is that? Well, um, if our elimination pathways are blocked, for example, like if someone has been constipated for a long time, and a lot of my clients do struggle with constipation, if we're starting to stir things up, but there's a blockage there, it can be really hard for the waste to come out. And so what I love about incorporating these different um, enzymes to really clean the colon and open up that pathway in the liver, it allows everything else to start to flow um, easier versus if we're just doing a water fast and we don't have things to like move the waste out. So I found it was really effective just in one day to really clear that pathway. And ever since I did that, I've been having easier. Um, I just feel like my bowels are cleaner and um, things can move through in a more easeful way than it was before. Because you, you have done just a straight water fast in the past, right? Yeah. Yeah. I've done water fast before. And, um, this is it. Like if anyone's done a water fast before, it can be really tough, you know, on the body if you're, especially if you're not prepared for it, but mm -hmm. also it's just, it could stir things up. And if things aren't being moved out, you could feel like worse. Um, mm -hmm. and so this really helps to like get things out. Um, so that way you're not having those uncomfortable feelings as long. Um, and yeah, I noticed a big difference with that. And it, it, they kind of act like little Pac-Man going and gobbling up old stuff and mo moving it out of the colon. And so that's like, even if somebody gets a colonic, it the colonic only goes so deep, but these can get into the small intestine. And like, you're also doing like abdominal massage to help and castor oil packs and different things and sauna to enhance the experience of really cleaning the terrain to allow the body to self-repair. That's awesome. Yeah. And I do agree with you because I've done 
a lot of different uh, water fasts in the past. And when I first started doing the water fast, it was really tough for me to, um, with the symptoms, because I had such a bad, like, detox symptoms like the the nausea really bad headache i mean it was it was really really tough sometimes to get through um like the first few water fasts so this could be you know a great way not only to clean out your terrain and your body but also get it ready if you really do want to do like a deeper healing or deeper fast because if you're doing it just when you already have so much toxins you might actually be doing more harm than the good. And then you're dealing with all these uncomfortable symptoms and side effects from, from the detox. Um, so can you speak on this particular cleanse that we did? So I, I just finished mine like a month ago. Um, I did the intestine and the liver cleanse. And I've actually never done that. And I know this is your second one. Yeah, that was my second time. I got such great results the first time that I wanted to do it again. And then I was really curious about experimenting with all of the other kits because the results with the colon and liver were so um, amazing. And also I was, my sister did it with me. And so to see what came out of both um, was really powerful in just like one day. So that inspired me to want to do the other ones, the lung and then the kidney and the blood and lymph. And so I'm currently doing those other ones now. First time you did the cleanse, like, can you talk a little bit more about what, what you experienced and how you felt during the fast, yeah. the cleanse? Yeah. So you're the first day, the colon one, you're taking something like every half hour. So I found it really helpful to put alarms in my phone. Um, so that way I didn't have to keep checking the time. And so you're not hungry. Um, but even more important, I feel like it's, it's important to like prepare your body to do that. Um, so I juiced, well, the first time I did it, I didn't prepare my body as good as I did the second time. So the second time I juiced for a couple days to just like give my digestion a rest. So that way, when I took the enzymes, it wasn't like breaking down what I ate yesterday, it could start to get to work on older things. And so I, I, you know, and before that I started to just eat like mostly fruits and vegetables and just eliminate anything out of a package or processed things. Um, Cause yeah, I think I'd gotten in the habit of eating like plantain chips and things that, you know, were just backing up in my system that I'm like, okay, I'm ready to cle clear all this out. And so just eating cleaner up until then. And then yeah, juicing like a day or two before is helpful. And then, um, so yeah, you're taking something every half hour of the enzymes that's going to start to clean the colon and, um, I, and they have a schedule, so everything's all laid out. So I just really followed that. And then I went in the sauna, um, partway through the day, which felt really good. And then, um, doing the abdominal massage is really helpful to just get things flowing. Um, but that day you feel kind of uncomfortable, like you feel really full and bloated like you're not hungry but the next day you start to release um and it, sometimes it happens for people the first day the second day or the third day so everyone's a little bit different um but you start to eliminate a good amount and you feel so much better i remember my sister saying she felt this intense sense of happiness after um mm. her relief just like getting all of that out and mm. so um yeah, so that's the, the one day colon. And then there's a kit that's called the rainbow kit. So it's the one day colon. And then you're taking enzymes um, throughout the day to prepare you on day six to do the liver cleanse. And from what I've heard from people, I've never done a liver flush before this protocol, because it just sounded really intense. <laughs> um, and when I heard that you don't have to drink that salt water drink, with this because the enzymes help to do what that does in a more gentle way um, that aligned with me more. And I've heard that people who've done different liver flushes say that this is way better and they'll only do these type of liver flushes, you know, in the future because of how, you know, they don't have to drink that drink and it was just easier the how it all works. And so on day six, you're doing the liver flush and it's amazing all the stuff that comes out the next over the next couple of days with that too. Um, and so, yeah, it's just, it's, it's, and your body is in autophagy. So they ideally want you to focus on, you know, doing water during the whole time. And since these enzymes have, have been fermented for three years, 
Um, it doesn't wreak havoc on digestion at all. If anything, it helps to like move things through. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, like Mm -hmm. the owner explains it like little Pac-Man going in and breaking up old stuff and carrying it out. And so your body's still in that autophagy healing phase because you're, you're water fasting throughout, but you're getting nourished from the enzymes throughout the whole week. Mm. That's amazing. And you know, I'm, I'm so grateful, Carrie, that you mentioned the prep for this cleanse, the liver and the intestine cleanse, because when I did mine, I didn't do like an actual good cleanse before, like a prep. And I'm telling you the first three days, it was rough for me. Um, I was doing it with a couple other clients as well. And we all kind of had t- rough symptoms. Like, I, I mean, I felt terrible. But then after that third day, it was like, it's like that curtain opened up. And like you said, your sister just felt so happy. So I do think the prep, doing it before you start the cleanse really helps. So you don't feel those, those kind of negative symptoms in the first three days. Uh, so And then the liver cleanse, just like you said, I was like scared to do the liver cleanses because it was like an intense process. And I'm like, oh my gosh, what if gallstone gets stuck in the gallbladder? Like, I don't want to go through this, but this was so easy and holy fazoli. Like I had so many gallstones released and, you know, I was thinking about it. Like I work in the medical field and we take gallbladders all the time right do gallbladder surgery all the time and if we did this like cleanse like at least like once or every couple years we might maybe even eliminate a lot of the gallbladder removal because what happens over time is those gallstones just sit in the gallbladder and we don't ever release it or they get stuck in there they get really hard and then after that I mean, there's no, you have no choice, but to have to take it out. I agree. If we just understood our body's like warning signs beforehand. And I just even recently connected with somebody where their daughter's appendix had to get removed. And if, if, but so that I asked, like, did you have, did she have warning signs and did she have digestive stuff? And she did. And so if we have these constipation, if we're not going to the bathroom as many times as we're eating, then that that's a problem. Like if we're only going once a day, that is a form of constipation if you're eating two or three times a day. Um, and so if we start to listen to these signs and signals or we're seeing something funny with our stools, these are all signs to like in, clean internally and clean that terrain. So then we can process what we consume in an easier way. Um, and if not, we just, you know, what we don't eliminate, we do accumulate in the body. And that's why it's mm. nice to do a reset. And this deeper reset is really nice because I feel like it just kind of thoroughly goes in and cleans the terrain um, on a deeper level than just a water fast by itself. And so, and it's easier, like you said, it's, um, but I love that you also brought up, you know, it was harder with, um, if you're not as prepared. So that's why I, and I love to talk to people about not just do this cleanse and then go back to old ways. Let's, you know, educate to understand why we should eat a certain way. And what, you know, what do you want your diet and lifestyle to look like after? Cause anyone can do a fast, but it takes, you know, a wise man to break fast and like how you break it and how you want to live your lifestyle. And then, um, and it's not what you do the ad day, but what you do every day and in between cleanses, like try to eat as healthy as possible. So, you know, when you have to do another one, it'll be easier and easier. And then your body will just start to even crave what, it, what is really good for it. Um, Cause you kind of clear the way and you kind of do hit like the reset button on your health and, and and then your taste buds are different and you're craving like what it is that is really good for your body because you start to feel more Mm, absolutely and and I'm glad you mentioned that actually I always say that the breaking the fast is actually more important than the fast itself because if you break the fast with the wrong types of food, you we can actually do more damage to your body because you're repopulating your gastric flora with like bad things. And so then you have more of the, you know, imbalance of the microbiome. And so it's like, it's like a vicious cycle. So it's so important to, like you mentioned, do like eat healthy foods, like whole foods, no processed crop and and, you know, after doing the intestine and liver f- uh, cleanse, I had no cravings for like junk food at all. Like I felt so light and just m- like your mind, your mind just feels so good and just like clear. 
And you don't have this great, like I never, even though it was a seven day, no food, you just ingest those enzymes throughout the day. But I had no hunger at all. Like not even for a second. I actually felt full the whole time. I was like, especially the first few days, I was like stuffed. Yeah. 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 yeah and that's nice too, because then you're not, and then if somebody is really hungry, if they're, you know, more active or something, you can sit with that emptiness and see what emotions come up because emotions can mm. come through. Um, but yeah, it, and it's, it's more like you think you're hungry, but you're really not hungry after a few days. It's like you're, you get used to it. And then when you do start to eat, um, yeah, you just, you feel more nourished faster because your body's now absorbing what you're eating instead of it go right through you. Mm. And, and Carrie, how did you come across this particular Zen cleanse uh, system that you found? I heard about it through somebody and I was really curious to learn more. So I just started like researching and looking it up. And then I found um, they had a YouTube channel. So I was watching like all the testimonials of people and I've done a lot of cleansing and fasting. And so I'm like, just this just sounds like it's um, with the people that have done a lot of the cleansing and fasting like I have say how effective this was so I just felt really inspired to try it um just because I it's nice to have other tools to really help people with their healing process and make it more easeful and so yeah I wanted to try it for myself before I shared it with other people and so that's why I was kind of testing it out with my sister and then seeing if this is something I would want to share with people if you know they feel inspired to like go deeper in their healing journey as well Mm. No, I I love that you found it because I just, I'm sure like many other people out there, I have tried so many like, you know, cleanses that you get at like Walgreens or another like store or, you know, health store, but this was different. And the packages too, like the rainbow cleanse package, the intestine and the liver cleanse comes in this beautiful package. I was like, oh my gosh, like the instructions printed out on this beautiful cardboard um, I mean, I was shocked and it comes from overseas, right? Yeah, it comes from Taiwan and they own their organic farm. So everything's mm-hmm. all organic, fermented for three years. And the owner of Zen Cleanse used to help people with um, fasting and um, cleansing retreats and different things like that, or a wellness center where he would help people with um, fasting. And so when he experienced this on himself, he was like, this is going to help people more than what I was doing before. And so that's why he, as a Chinese medicine practitioner, brought that in. And um, yeah, I don't, I'm not, I don't know when it started, but I'm so grateful for the products because they're, they are really helpful. Mm-hmm. And especially even like the maintenance stuff are, can be really helpful for people if they are wanting to eat more cooked food, because we do need enzymes in so many processes of our body. And so if we're eating a lot of cooked food that are void of these enzymes, it's helpful to take, take them. And um, they make it really e- easy and convenient because they have some in liquid, some in like different like tablets or powders that I mean, one of my favorite ones is called Quantum Particles. It tastes like fun dip. I love Um, them. Yes, they're so yummy. That's another thing. It's like, it's nothing like some crazy herbal, like, ooh, you want to like literally regurgitate as soon as you take it. They were all so like yummy. Like all the stuff that I took throughout the whole week, I was like, this is good. Yeah, it's not not intense. (laughs) Um, What are you going to say that? Oh, and it's about too like a lot of people are always like, let's kill the parasites or like take mm-hmm. these herbal things and kill parasites, which is is great. But if you don't get to the terrain of like what's feeding them, like get to their food source, then you're going to have to continually kill them until you get to the root of what they're feeding on. And so I'm all about like cleaning the terrain and allowing um, the body to self repair because once you get clean the terrain, then they won't have that though that the environment for those parasites or bacteria to thrive. Mm, yeah wow that's a good point because yeah those those parasite cleansers are like actually somebody recommended like a herbal cleanse for me too and you were the one that said well you want to clean the terrain and that was my main reason for trying this cleanse is because I did have some issues with parasites and you said you want to clean the terrain because even even though you killed the parasites there might still be like eggs or you you can ingest some more again if you eat like raw food and stuff and you'll be right right back to square one because they will have that, you know, perfect environment to feed on. But if you don't, then they'll be gone, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, so it's it's nice to just like, yeah, 
get to the root of that. So you're not constantly having to do those all the time. Um, but yeah, but they can be helpful to do like at the end of your, and I know some people have done them at the end of like making sure all the pathways are open. So then when you do take those, you know, things can come out easier too. It's not stuck. Mm -hmm. Um, so making sure elimination pathways are open is really helpful, especially too, for feeling better. Cause if you're moving all that stuff and there's die off, but it can't come out, you're not going to feel good. That makes sense. Um, Carrie, so you did the first one, was it last year, the first uh, liver intestine cleanse? Mm -hmm. And then you just finished one like a week ago or something like that. What, like, what inspired you to do the second one? And what difference have you seen from the first one versus the one you just did now last week? Yeah, so I personally, in my journey, I had a lot of emotional stuff and um, tragic life things happen in my life. So I kind of old habits crept back in. Um, I wasn't taking care of myself in the best way. And so I just noticed, um, yeah, I wasn't centered and balanced like I normally would be just because of just cer certain life situations that happened. And so it also inspired me to like look more within and find that center. And I'm like, okay, I'm, I'm I know I'm going to do it again eventually when I'm ready. And I was just observing my patterns and old things coming up to, um, yeah, get really clear on how I want to move forward. And it, it brought me back to like doing a major reset with the Zen cleanse because I really loved how I felt with that first week. Um, so I'm like, okay, I want to do this. I want to do a deeper one and I'm going to prepare my body better this time. And I'm going to um, do the through the rainbow and then move into the other kits because I got such great results. And then I'm going to stay centered into, yeah, since I did all that inner work of like really wanting to find my center, no matter what storm comes my way to just still be true to like my, um, yeah, how I want to have my lifestyle. And, and I dealt with the emotional thing. So then the other habits weren't creeping in like they were um, after that first one. Mm, that's awesome. So, Getting, yeah, centering myself and doing that, oh, my own internal work, and then um, getting really clear on the results I want moving forward and not like this yo-yo back and forth that I was doing before. With the second intestinal cleanse, did you have more of a release or, I mean, did you feel like a major difference when you did the second one? And I, I know you said you you did a better prep for this one, so it was probably more effective in a sense. Yeah. Yeah. I, I still got a good amount. I, I lost about, I think 12 pounds the first wow. one in 11 with this one. Um, and which was like waste really, I feel like it was like waste. I lost, like it needed mm -hmm. to come out. Um, and of course some of it was water. So you gain a little bit back, but I didn't gain the full, um, back for after this last one. Um, but yeah, you do feel a lot lighter and, um, I ended up booking a colonic after this one, which I thought was helpful just to make sure everything came out and it, there was still some stuff left, but I'm glad I did that. And not, not that people have to do that, but if you want to make sure everything's all cleaned out, you can do that at the back end or do an enema. Um, and then just doing lots of abdominal massage. I did a lot more self care things during the second one. Cause I, and I put everything in my phone, um, ahead of time. So I wasn't like, stressed of like the timing and catching things. Um, but yeah, I just allowed space to feel and move through things. If I needed to, I didn't schedule a whole lot. Um, and I, I also like shared with my family, you know, I'm doing this and I'm going to need support on this day at this time. So that way, um, yeah, cause the first one, I think my son needed help and I adjusted the liver. I drank the liver drink and I had to get out of bed and you're not supposed to do that. And so I just asked for more support too, which um, like is so if someone's listening and they have a family and they're wanting to go into this um, day one and day six, you're going to want, you know, more support around the house or, or, um, you know, at that day six, you're, once you drink the last drink, you you lay on your right side and for 45 minutes. And so you just want to have like quiet. Um so yeah, I was more prepared for those type of things. Um, and then, yeah, I, I was able to, I kind of got like a similar amount out, maybe a little bit less because I had prepared my body um, better this time, um, but I still got stuff out. And um, yeah, it was a really good reset that I needed to move into these other kits and then into the lifestyle that I'm in, in a more centered, balanced way. That's amazing. 
for someone that wants to do the seven day intestine, the rainbow clean, the intestines and the liver cleanse, do you recommend that they would take the time off while they do it? Or like, what's the best way to go about it? Yeah, I mean, if, if somebody can take the time off, it's nice to just have that like, you know, week to yourself. But if somebody can't, I would say for sure, take the day one and day six off. Um, because you're going to be taking something every half hour on day one and on day six, you're taking something like every hour. Um, and then on day six, you're going to the bathroom a little bit more. So yeah, you'll want to be by a bathroom and wet wipes are helpful to have on hand. Yes. <laughs> um, <laughs> or a bidet and, or a bidet or something. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Something like that. But, um, but in it, it's not painful of things coming out or anything like that. Cause uh, you know, when mucoid plaque or stones come out, you'd think like, Oh gosh, that sounds painful. It's not painful. The enzymes help break things out. So it comes yeah. out nicely. So they're soft. Um, yeah. The, the stones are not like hard stones when you think about like gallstones. And, and I did like, when I first saw them, like I freaked out, they're like all these little green, like stones. And I'm like, Oh my gosh, like, where did this come from? Like it's, it's, it was kind of mind, but like it was, it blew my mind that there was so much stuff that came out and yes, it doesn't hurt, but like, I recommend same thing. Like Carrie said, day one, like you can maybe start on like Sunday, right? Sunday. And then if you have to work Monday to Friday and then you can do, you know, maybe move the day six, you can move them around too, right? Like you could move it. Yeah. So the last days on Saturday, because it. It was the, the sixth day when you did the liver cleanse. Yes, I was in the bathroom like all the time. Yeah. And I there's no way I could have made it to work. Yeah. 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 So those are the days I would be home. But yeah, you can move it around. So like if your schedule is a little different, you can do day six on day five or, you know, a, you know, we can change it. Um, so it's nice for that. Um, and then you mentioned also like utilizing a sauna what if someone doesn't have a sauna you will you still get the same effects if you don't use a sauna yeah so our skin is our largest organ so it's helpful like if we're not eliminating other ways skin is such a great elimination organ so sweating is helpful and can just help you feel better during a cleanse so if somebody doesn't have a sauna you could always go to a gym. Usually their sun is in the area. You could, you know, go for a day. Some people um, have those like different spas that you can go to and use. But if for some reason you can't find one hot Epsom salt bath, I find helpful because I sweat during those. Like if you take a really hot Epsom salt mm -hmm. bath, um, I noticed that that can help me sweat and that might feel good too. Um, so yeah, that's what, what I would do. Or if you live in a hot climate, yeah, go out in the sun for a little bit, um, not to burn, but like, you know, work up a sweat and that way, not like crazy workouts, but like walking, you could maybe do some like gentle yoga outside or exercise. Great, great points. And then also the Epsom salt bath, you can add some baking soda and that helps like to pull out a lot of toxins. Uh, same thing with the um, Epsom salt. So I do like whenever I'm traveling, I, I make sure I have a nice bathtub where I can at least take a bath every night. And um, so Carrie, so once we, once you finish the, cause we're doing kind of the similar um, cleanses right now. Uh, I think now you're doing the lung cleanse and the kidney cleanse right now. They're both 30 days. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Well, about one's 30, I think one's 28 days, but yeah, I'm doing them together. Yeah. I'm doing the same thing, but I, I'm a little behind on the kidney one. Cause I started it like two weeks later after my lung cleanse. And, and we are not, by the way, we're not sponsored by Zen Cleanse. We're like legit just doing it because we do love the product and we we believe in it because we've both tried it many times. Uh, we You can use uh, either one of our affiliate link if you do want to order it. There's like a small percentage you get from it. So I will definitely post uh, both of ours, Carrie's and mine link in the description. So but we're not we're not getting paid for talking about this um, cleanse, but um, going back to the liver, like not, excuse me, to the lung and the kidney cleanse, what, like what inspired you to do the other? I mean, you don't have any stuff issues with your lungs. Is it just because you just want to kind of do like a reset, like you said, or what is the reason you went ahead yeah. and did the next two 
Well, I wanted to try all of them, but actually at the end of the rainbow, I felt like I needed to do a lung cleanse afterwards because I, my body was, you know, as you go in autophagy and detox mode, your body starts to purge stuff out. Like you get more mucus out. Um, I don't know if anyone's ever had tonsil stones, but I was getting tonsil stones out. And so I knew there was like congestion in this area. And so I felt like the lung cleanse would be helpful to just expectorate more or get just clean the lungs. And I used to smoke cigarettes a long time ago. People are usually what? shocked to no hear way. that. <laughs> no way. Um, yeah. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yeah. So I, um, yeah, thank God I don't do that anymore. I don't know how I did, but <laughs> yeah, for some reason I got into that when I was younger. And, um, and so, yeah, I just felt like it would be good to clean them out. And then my grandma died of lung cancer and um, at age 32 after having wow. eight kids. And so, felt like, you know, those, these genetics that are passed down and then me smoking probably didn't help. And, um, you know, all the life diet and lifestyle I grew up eating that I just felt like, yeah, there could be, if I was getting tonsil stones or some congestion here. And so why not do the lung cleanse? And it actually was perfect because I felt like I wanted to do one after, mm -hmm. um, the colon and liver. And that's awesome. And, you know, I, I went ahead and did the, um, lung cleanse as well, because I was diagnosed with asthma, like a mild onset of adult asthma about four years ago when I was in Africa. And most of it was related to the really bad pollution uh, we experienced in Ethiopia when I was working there. It was a medical mission trip. And I came back home. And I was sick. I was sick for like six months. And um, I don't really have that many symptoms anymore, but every so often it will flare up and I'll just like feel like wheezing and stuff. So I, I figured, you know, maybe there's just some toxins and stuff that stuck from, from there. Maybe it will help expel some of it. And I have been like, like the first couple of weeks, I'm not coughing as much anymore, but like the first couple of weeks, it was a lot of coughing and I definitely felt like things were moving out of my lungs. So that's, I mean, that's really good. Um, so we'll see, I'm not finished with it yet. And we'll definitely report back on that. And then after this, the, 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 the syrup that comes with it, you feel it yes. like open things up and, so, and it tastes mm -hmm. good too. And I like the tea at night. And so, yeah, it's, yes. but yeah, I wanted to mention that before you went out. I, I, I love the syrup too. And the tea, and I'm actually, I got kind of hooked on the tea. Okay. So after these two cleanses, the lung cleanse and the kidney cleanse, what's next after this one? Yeah, I'm going to do the blood and lymph. I was just giving myself a little break from all the intenseness because I know that's another seven day. So it's seven days total. So I was going to do it maybe like the week before I'm done with the um, lung and kidney one. So either the last week of that or the week before um, I'm finished with that. I wanted to incorporate that in. That's awesome. And you know, Carrie, like one very common question that I get from people when I'm doing like a deeper cleanse or even fasting, really, people ask me, well, your body, isn't your body designed to just get rid of the toxins? I mean, your liver cleanses itself, your kidney cleanses itself. Like, what is your answer when people tell you that? Yeah, I mean, in a perfect world, yes, we would be doing that and we wouldn't have all these other in another perfect world, we wouldn't have all the chemicals, all the toxins and all the stuff in our environment that we didn't have a hundred years ago. And so since we have accumulated all this stuff, this is why we're seeing um, people getting their gallbladders out and tonsils out and hysterectomies. Like this doesn't just happen. We, we need our organs. We need our endocrine glands. We need all these things. And we're so quick to take them out instead of seek to understand why they aren't functioning optimal. Mm -hmm. And so, yes, our body is supposed to function op optimally, but why are so many people on anxiety medication and depression medication? If our, you know, if our colon was clean and our body was well nourished and hydrated enough, would we really need these things? Mm -hmm. um, if the environment, you know, in, in so much of our society, it's like fast paced society is the environment, you know, cr what we really need to thrive. And so, so many people are changing, you know, being entrepreneurs or finding different ways to have a work family balance. Like all these things are shifting on the um, social aspect as well as like internal too. So we need to start going back to nature and really getting to the root of why these 
why, why is somebody constipated? Isn't our digestion supposed to just work every time we eat? Um, like when an animal eats, they go to the bathroom right after. Um, and what makes us any different is the, the mucus forming foods, the congesting foods, the processed foods, like all the stuff that accumulates. And if we never take time to like listen and clean things out, then we're, you know, our, our machine, our body is not going to function as optimal. Just like a car, if you have a check engine light on and you just put a band aid over it because the car's supposed to drive, the car's supposed to work. And then eventually it won't, you know, if you don't change the oil, eventually your car won't um, run. And so same thing with our body. If we just, yeah, it's, yeah, our, our liver's supposed to do this. And so, but if you keep abusing it, <laughs> You know, um, by drinking alcohol all the time or, you know, eating all these heavy fried foods like, yes, our liver should work, but it's overburdened because of what we're our lifestyle. And so, yeah, if if we ate more of in alignment in nature and like local and all these things, then, yeah, but we wouldn't need to go to these extremes to cleanse and um, do all that. But it's it even if you eat healthy, it's still important to like clean the internal environment because we can't avoid all the things um, in the environment and in our food. Mm, that's so good. It, it makes total sense. And really, you know, Carrie, if you think about it, like a century, you know, a couple of centuries ago, we didn't have so much junk and the processed foods and the environment. It's not just the food, but it's what we put on our skin or our body. Um, Wi-Fi, EMF, you know, we're constantly surrounded by pollution, by toxic things. I mean, we have our cell phones like on us all the time. You know, you don't think about the effect it has on our cells and how it can actually slow down our mitochondria from being exposed to the EMF, to the Wi-Fi constantly. There's, you know, just so much info that's coming out about it now too. And, you know, again, I, like you said, I'm kind of like going back to basics. Like at night, I turn off my Wi-Fi. Uh, I keep my phone away. Like it's, it's, I go out in the nature. I get on the grass and, and walk and ground. It's just, and it's what it feels good. When you really are in tune with your body and what feels good, you are going to be drawn to those things, just like this cleanse. It didn't just like pop out out of the blue. You know, I was meant to do that to make my body function the best because when your butt, your body feels good, when your gut is healthy, just like you mentioned, you, you know, the brain and gut connection. I mean, it's a real thing. Like you mentioned about anxiety and depression, people mm-hmm. really, you know, they get on antidepressants, which are again, just like another band aid they put on where the source really is it goes back to the gut to to your nutrition and a lot of other things so great points and i hope that you know you will take this into consideration and really kind of look at your body as a whole picture not as a just okay quick fix let me take this let me just do this and and really get in tune with your body what it needs because when you listen your body will tell you yeah, yeah, exactly. And, and not to do the physical aspects of like the anxiety and depression, but there's a reason why somebody had the anxiety or depression. There's a there's some type of childhood trauma, usually, mm-hmm. almost every person I've talked to or every client that has to be on medication, there's an event that happened or some a belief system they started to create because of an event that happened or not feeling safe or different things. And so really reprogramming all of that. But a lot of times too, when you work on the physical, things start to break up and the fluids start to flow and the there's no stagnation and obstructions anymore. And so the emotions can start to come through. And I noticed that a, a long time ago when I, you know, learned about regenerative detox and I started to change my diet and lifestyle. Um I was more in touch with the emotional body. <laughs> and so there's like forgiveness work I had to do and like all these other things. So sometimes, or for me, it helped me to focus on the physical and then the emotional, spiritual stuff just like naturally came through. And so, and some people do the opposite. And so just like, it's all connected is what I want to say. Mm-hmm. And um, when you take care of our body, you know, you just, your frequency shifts, your vibration shifts, and then you can see that, you know, what it is that you're wanting to create, you start to attract that because you're now in the resonance of your true, true self of like removing those obstructions to the flow of energy in all the ways. Mm, that's so good, Carrie. This is why I love chatting with you. And you just, I mean, it just makes so much sense. And like, think about like the diet culture. I have tried to lose weight so many times 
at every diet that I've tried, every diet known to man. And it didn't happen because I was trying to put a Band-Aid on things, do a quick fix. And I didn't really tap into really what my body needed, my mind. Because weight gain is not just the food that you eat. It's your thoughts and maybe past experiences, uh, limiting beliefs, like all of that stuff you have to reprogram, reprogram. And it's not something that just happens overnight. I mean, I'm still working on it. I'm still not perfect, but it's been like probably the last four or five years that I've been incorporating all those things. And the more you get through one barrier, another one, you know, opens up and you clear another thing. And it's just, it's really amazing when you tune into your body and what it needs and your, and your mindset. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. And I'm so glad that yeah, and it's really getting to the health of the cell, right? And once you understand what makes a cell healthy and what causes damage to a cell, then like weight loss is just a side effect of like taking care of your body and, you know, removing obstructions to the flow of energy, whether it's with the mind or physical. Um, yeah, it makes a big difference. Well, how do you get into the, how do you get into the depth of the cell? Like what, how do you, I, I know you are a regenerative practitioner. Like how do you start off someone? Um, obviously we'll share your info and stuff if someone wants to contact you and chat with you, but like, how do you, how do you start off with getting down to the cell level and figuring things out yeah. on the cellular level? Yeah, well, we have, you know, our bodies are roughly made of 100 trillion cells and each cell is surrounded by two major fluids. So you have your blood that feeds your cells and, you know, all of your cells make up your endocrine glands, your organs, your whole body. And so if it's just a bunch of cells and two fluids, you're, you, you need the blood to feed your cells. But you also have the other fluid, the lymphatic fluid, which is four times bigger than the blood, which is responsible for removing the, the cell waste. And so if that gets congested, just like, you know, in our house, if we never take out the trash, we're it's not going to be pleasant to live there. So it's kind of same thing with our body. If our cellular waste isn't able to come out because there's obstructions in the lymphatic system. I mean, this is where cysts and tumors wow. and different things form. And, you know, if you see someone with acne, the lymph system is backed up um, and the sewer system is backed up. It's not a teenage thing or hormonal thing. Like there's reasons, there's always a cause and effect. And so, you know, it's not our fault. Like we, we just weren't taught these things. And so, I like to share too, genetics loads the gun, but lifestyle pulls the trigger. So even mm. if we're genetically exposed to something, we can still take our matters in our own hands and start to like educate ourselves to learn these things. And so back to the cell, if the cell isn't able to get the waste out, then what is that, that environment for that cell to thrive starts to get stagnated. And so just like a pool, um, if there's not flow with the water, it's a stagnant pool. Be, it's a breeding ground for disease. So same thing with our bodies. If our waters are stagnant, if we're not able to get things flowing, then that's a breeding ground for things to get congested and glomulated and dehydrated and um, things can, you know, grow from there. And so like cancer and all, all these labels they put on things isn't really a mystery. It's just a backed up sewer system, a backed up mm -hmm sewer system in our body and so if we start to open up the pathways and clean things out on a cell level then our cells can function better because we're getting the environment we're cleaning the environment so it's kind of like yeah if you lived in a dirty house you eventually you're not going to want to live in that environment it's going to be toxic to live in so same thing with our bodies we just want to clean the internal terrain clean the waters um and listen to our signals if we have pain that's not going away, inflammation that's not going away, dark bags under our eyes every morning. If we're, you know, swollen, I remember I would eat certain foods and I could see my face was more swollen or my eyelids were like more puffy. Um, so listening to our body signals, digestion, if we're going to the bathroom too much or not enough, um, those are all signs. And, you know, um, if we're congested all the time or mucusy, these are all signals and signs that the cells are so struggling. good. This is so good, Carrie. Oh my gosh, this is so good. Mm. Yeah, Amazing. so it's just really listening to, and then, it, you know, as a parent, if you see your kids, if they're not having bowel movements, you know, every day, every time they eat, then there's a, a reason for that. And so I remember, um, some doctors even saying like, oh, it's okay if they, you know, if they're babies, if they're not going to the bathroom every day, I'm like, mm, that's no, they need to be going every day, even if they're drinking milk. Um, so we could start to see these things in our kids. And so many kids are coming in with eczema, um, 
sense, so many sensitivities because our lymphatic system we're passing down to our kids because we're not taking the time to clean our internal terrain. Mm -hmm. And I really believe like what's happening inside is a reflection of what's happening outside. And we're seeing our oceans being polluted, our rivers being polluted and all the waters. And it starts like, I'm like, ah, oh, overwhelmed, like want to clean the ocean, want to clean all the plastics out and all the rivers. And I can't even swim in my lake that's in my neighborhood. And I wish I could, but the, cause the waters are, are dirty from, uh, from our lifestyle and environment. And so what I can do is start with my own internal waters and start to clean that. And then from there, you know, ripple that out. And so, yeah, that's how you get down to the cell level is tending to the terrain so that the cells can function in the best way. And they're not, you know, surrounded by, you know, congestion and dirty fluids. Oh, so good, Carrie. You, you're amazing. Seriously. You're just like blowing in my mind. Like, and I'm a medical professional, you know, uh, the other day I had a patient that I was doing, you know, surgery on prepping for surgery. And uh, she's like, Oh, I'm, I'm on antibiotics right now, because I have enlarged lymph node here in my neck. So they just put me on antibiotics. And I'm, and I'm like, oh. mm -hmm. it just like mm -hmm. my my heart just sinks, and I can't do anything. You know, because yeah. it's not someone I can consult. But this is like what happens. Like you go to a doctor, you have enlarged lymph node. Let's give you antibiotics. What is the antibiotic going to do? Yeah, it just covers. Yes. It just covers it's it up. A and, it and antibiotics literally stands for against life. So you're killing all the yes. good and all the bad. And um, and then that throws off the gut microbiome. I grew up on tons of antibiotics because of chronic ear infections. And I'm really proud to say I'm. My kids, I have two kids and one's 17 and one's five, and they have never been on antibiotics oh, because amazing. they know what to do naturally to help. So like recently, my daughter went to the dentist and because um, she was having tooth pain and I had a feeling I was like, is it bacterial? But she didn't really know what that meant. So anyhow, we went to the dentist and they confirmed there's bacteria stuck in there. And he was like, I, I'll give you antibiotics. And then if that doesn't work, I'll do a root canal. And I was like, oh, no. Mm. <laughs> um, so I ended up changing her diet, like cleaned up her diet. Cause you know, she's 17 and eats, you know, different, not ideal all the time, but I explained to her, if you take the antibiotics, it's going to throw off the gut microbiome and it's, it's not going to cover up the reason why the bacteria got there in the first place. It's because you got to clean the terrain. So I had her change her diet and eating healthier. And then I had her take certain herbs that are helpful and different formulas that is like a natural antibiotic, but doesn't affect the body in a negative way. And in four days, her pain went from 10 out of 10 to zero out of 10. And she didn't have to take the antibiotics and then didn't have to do the root canal. Cause I feel like a root canal is kind of similar to like taking out the gallbladder, you know, like it's just covering it up. It's not getting to the root of why you had to do that root canal. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm not trying to tell anybody what to do because you really want to change the diet and lifestyle is such a foundational piece. If you want to go the natural route, you can't just not do something and like not take an antibiotic for a UTI and not change your diet. Like, the antibiotics can be helpful if somebody doesn't want to, you know, change. So mm -hmm. I just do want to say that. Um, but since I'm, you know, trained and I used to get UTIs all the time. And so I haven't even had the felt like I was on the verge of one in over eight years because I changed the, mm -hmm. the chemistry I'm bringing in my body. So I don't have those flare ups like I used to all the time. And so that's why it's really important to, I used to try to do the natural things back then, but I didn't understand how foundational the nutrition was and what I should be eating. So I kept getting them reoccurring and I didn't know why. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's why it's really important to like clean the terrain and understand these things to really know how to get to the root and, and do it in a natural way. So if you're going the natural route, you really want to know, not just take this remedy, like a pharmaceutical um, you have to change the diet and lifestyle mm. or what I've noticed in my own body and, um, yeah. And, and seeing more results that are sustainable, not just like come and go. That's that so good. This is like just some golden tips right here. And, and how can people contact you, Carrie, if they want to chat with you about, um, any of this? I know you do consultations and stuff. Yeah, yeah, you can find me on Instagram or you can email me, um, Carrie Tidwell at gmail.com. So it's just K A R R I T I D W E L L. Um, I'm actually working on a project right now of like, I'm wanting to create protocols of like, if somebody is in a crisis, whether it's a UTI or congestion mm -hmm. in the body or cough, like natural remedies. Yes. Um, but so, yeah, so I'm 
working on that because a lot of people call me like, ah, oh, my kid has an ear infection. What do I do? Or um, a UTI, what do I do? So all these common things, but also not just share what to do, but why that's happening and then getting to the root, you know, so you don't have to keep having those reoccurring things and what I have in my medicine cabinet on hand to help with these situations, um, I feel like is really important. I feel like every mom should know. Um, and then, yeah, I'm working on a course right now, just on getting to the root of, it's going to be called initiation to regeneration. So mm. like really helping people understand um, the body and, and then w- what you can do and really put the power back in your hands to really educate you to not give your power away to another, a doctor or a, or even a practitioner. Like I'm just going to share the knowledge I've acquired for the last 20 years um, and to really empower you with the knowledge. And then it's your body is the healer. So if we just give it the optimal conditions, it's amazing how it can heal and it can look Mm. different, you know, for everybody of like exactly their protocol, you know, it it depends on what we're coming from. And so I really want to educate and inspire people to be their own doctor, their own healer um, to have the knowledge for themselves and then their families. Oh, that's amazing. I'm looking forward for all this, the course coming out because that's going to be so like, I want to get that because <laughs> I still, I mean, there's a lot of things I don't know about. And I mean, there's just so many things that you can do, you know, obviously if you really need to go to the doctor, you, you need to, right. You know, when you do, but there's times where you can basically change your nutrition and the way you're doing things to heal your body from the inside out. And and optimally, you want to do this before you get into problems. Like we want to create that terrain before, you know, you find out you have cancer. We're we're doing all this to prep your body to keep it in the healthiest, the most optimal uh, health, I guess, right? Yeah, yeah. And currently I do also con- one-on-one consultations until I get everything transferred over. But yeah. It's it's listening to these signals, listen to our body's whispers so we don't have to hear it scream later. And a lot of times I'm people's last resort when their body's like screaming and they're like, okay, now help. <laughs> um, but I really want to empower, like, let's listen to these signs of like, you're not going to the bathroom more than once a day. You know, if you're a skin stuff or if there's inflammation that's not getting better, there's a reason for that. Our body sh- should self-heal and self-repair. And if it's not, to always question, okay, why is that happening and getting to the root cause? Mm, that's so good. Well, thank you, Carrie, for your time. I will post your links to your profile and your email below. Uh, I'll also post the links for the Zen Cleanse if any of you guys want to try it. Uh, mm-hmm. We're highly recommended. And uh, message us on Instagram if you have any questions about what we discuss. And I, I hope that this was helpful for you all. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks, Monica. Thanks for sharing. And thanks for yeah doing the work on yourself and being that example and rippling that out because yeah, it makes a difference when we all take really good care of ourselves. Yeah. Thank you, Carrie. Mm-hmm. Thank you.